In a previous video, we demonstrated how to create arrow plots as well as a color expression. In this tutorial, we will show you how to create a slice plot in Comsol Multiphysics. Slice plots are an effective post-processing tool that can be applied to many types of models. They are available for 3D plot groups and display one or more cross-sectional surfaces that indicate how a variable changes over a specific area of a plot. This is useful for viewing physics behavior on different parts of your model for any simulation. Here we have the solved heat sink tutorial model opened up from the application library. In this model, we have a heat sink and a channel, and we know from previous videos that air flows through the channel between the pillars and cools off the heat sink. If we go to the velocity SPF plot group in the results node and we expand it, we can see a slice plot. And this slice plot shows the velocity magnitude of the air as it flows throughout the channel, with red indicating where air is flowing fastest and blue where the flow is moving slowest. And I'm actually going to delete this plot now so we can start from scratch and learn how to recreate it. We can add this plot to the velocity plot group in a couple of ways. I can either add it through the model tree um, by right clicking on the velocity node and choosing slice plot. Or I could also have added it through the ribbon up at the top here. Let's click plot to show what the default settings look like. So right now we have several cross-sectional slices showing the temperature change along the channel. But we want a plot of the velocity magnitude, so let's adjust the settings for the plot now. And I'll leave the data set as it is to be taken from the plot group node. Then under expression, I'll go into the replace expressions menu to choose a different quantity to plot. So under laminar flow, I'll select the velocity magnitude spf.u. And when I plot this, our slices will show the velocity magnitude of the airflow at different points in the channel. And in the title section, you can see that there are a few different options to customize or remove the title in the plot. Then in the plane data section, this is where we specify the type and the configuration of the planes in the slice plot. Under plane type, I can choose quick, the default option, or general, where I can specify specific planes. And the settings you enter following this will depend on the plane type you select initially. So we'll start with quick planes. And under the plane option, we can pick which plane we want our cross sections to be plotted in. Here the YZ option works perfectly, but we could also plot in the XY plane or in the ZX plane. And under the entry method, we have two options. We can either enter a number of planes or we can choose coordinates where we can enter the grid coordinates I want the cross sections to be located at. So in number of planes, let's suppose I change that number to 10, we'll see 10 slices. If you choose coordinates, you can enter the grid coordinates where you want the cross sections to be located. This is convenient if there are specific locations you want to see a cross section displayed in. So for example, we want to look at the airflow velocity just around the heat sink itself. So glancing along the x-axis, let's create a slice at coordinates 0, 0 0.1, and negative 0 0.01. So I'll add these. And we'll see specific slices along the coordinates that I've chosen. Now I'll switch back to the number of planes entry method and return the number of planes to five so that we can see each individual slice completely. And to finish off the plane data section, we also have this interactive checkbox. And this enables us to move slices either by dragging the slider or by entering a number in the shift field. So I'll reset that to zero now. If I go into the range section, I can adjust the manual color range. The minimum value automatically is zero, but let's change that to 0 0.06. And we can see that the minimum value is now 0 0.06 in the color legend. And all the data existing below this value is automatically rendered with the same color as the new minimum. And I'll return the minimum to zero now to reset to the original plot. We can also change the manual data range, which will change which data is actually visible in the graphics window. So if I adjust the slider, 
you can see I'm rendering a subset of the original data. In this setting, we'll cut out from our plot any values that are outside the specified minimum and maximum. And then lastly, under the coloring and style section, we can change the color table. So let's try the wave pattern or maybe the thermal pattern. I think I'll return it to rainbow. But we have several options in the color table. We can also reverse the order so that the highest velocity is now indicated by blue instead of red. We can also symmetrize the color table so that the color range becomes centered around zero. And this isn't relevant for our results here, but it's a great option for visualizing wave-like solutions with zero bias, for instance. And with that, we have finished defining our slice plot. And this slice plot shows the velocity magnitude of the air as it flows throughout the channel. So we've learned how slice plots enable us to visualize a change in a variable over a distance through displaying a quantity on cross-sectional surfaces. We also went over many of the options available within the slice plot settings window, including changing the quantity to plot, updating the plain data section where we configured where and how many cross-sections would be plotted, and reviewing the options for the color scheme of the results shown. In an upcoming video, we will show how to create contour plots in Comsol Multiphysics.